Hey everyone, in this video, I'm going to tell you about a thriller movie from 2015 called Even Lambs Have Teeth. The story starts with two best friends, Katie and Sloan. Katie is a bit serious, while Sloan is more adventurous. They're excited about an upcoming trip to a farm called Ecofield Organic Farms. They plan to work there for a month to save money for shopping in New York City. On the first morning of their trip, Katie's uncle, Jason, who is a police officer, gives them a ride and they stay at his girlfriend's place for a night. When they settle in, Sloan suggests they use fake names while they're in the town. Sloan chooses the name Heather, and Katie goes with Ripley. The next day, Uncle Jason takes them to a bus station. He's a caring uncle and advises them to have a secret word in case they need help. So, here's what's happening. Katie and Sloan have to use a secret code word in their texts, and they need to send a word in alphabetical order to Katie's Uncle Jason every day. Their first code word is Apple. After Jason leaves, they have some time before their bus arrives, so they wait at a cafe. While they're at the cafe, they meet two guys from the town named Jed and, and Lucas. Katie and Sloan introduce themselves with the fake names they came up with, and the guys say they're brothers. The brothers offer to give them a ride to their workplace, even though Katie is a bit unsure at first. Eventually, they agree and get into the guys' blue truck. But things start getting strange. Jed doesn't take them directly to the farm where they're supposed to work, and this confuses Katie and Sloan. They keep asking if they're going the right way, and Jed tells them to wait and see. Finally, they arrive at a place. The guys say it's their family's home and invite the women inside. They meet the guy's mom, who seems a bit shady. She offers them tea, and they sit down for a chat before going to the farm. While they're there, Katie gets a text from her uncle, and she uses the secret code to let him know she's okay. Meanwhile, they're served some pie and tea, even though they probably shouldn't have trusted it. But they eat and drink it anyway. Unfortunately, there's something in the drinks that makes their vision blurry, turns out. They've been drugged. The two friends quickly realize that something is wrong and try to escape. But Jad and Lucas catch them and bring them back inside, making them unconscious. The next day, Katie and Sloane wake up in the woods, chained up and frightened. Jad tells them they'll have to live here now and provides them with basic things like clothes, a bed, and a toilet. Later, another man named Boris arrives and takes Katie's phone to see if anyone is searching for them. He figures out that they lied about their names and the secret code word. They finally admit that the word apple is the real safe word. Things get worse when the town's sheriff appears while Katie and Sloan are getting ready to shower. He's a horrible person who supports human trafficking, and he threatens them with his gun. After the sheriff leaves, Sloan tries to comfort Katie. Meanwhile, their uncle Jason becomes worried when he gets a text with the same safe word as before. He realizes something's wrong and starts looking for them. Back in the woods, Jed and Lucas introduce another man whom they call Scruffy Guy. He takes Sloan into a trailer, and it becomes clear that he's unstable. Uncle Jason becomes more concerned when he contacts Katie and Sloan's workplace and learns they never showed up. He becomes convinced they're in trouble and starts searching for them. Meanwhile, things take an even darker turn for Sloan and Katie as an even scarier customer arrives. Jed and Lucas try to protect them as the new person approaches. A person in a pig mask takes Sloan into a trailer. After he leaves, Katie tries to comfort her. Happened. In the next scene, Uncle Jason, who is actually an FBI agent, arrives at the sheriff's office. He meets the town's creepy sheriff and tells him that his niece is kidnapped. He also mentions that Katie didn't use a new code word in her latest text. This information makes its way to the kidnappers. Meanwhile, back in the woods, Boss Boris decides they need to kill Katie and Sloan because of the FBI involvement. Katie overhears this plan. The FBI uncle goes to the cafe, where he last saw Katie and Sloan and gets information about the truck they left in. The next day, Katie warns Sloan that the kidnappers will soon try to kill them. The kidnappers, along with a guy named Scruffy, show up and leave Scruffy to watch them. Katie seduces Scruffy and then attacks him, freeing herself and Sloan. They manage to escape their chains. The sheriff arrives, likely to harm them, but the two women steal his car just in time. They go to a hardware store to get supplies and ask the cashier about Boris, who has a blue truck. They find out where he lives. Meanwhile, Uncle Jason investigates by going to a car insurance building. He pretends to have had an accident involving a blue truck and asks who owns it. 
Back at Boris's place, Katie and Sloane surprise him with nail spike tennis balls, injuring him. It's getting intense, and things are about to get even more serious. With the situation reversed, Boris begs for his life and offers money to spare himself. Uncle Jason arrives outside Boris's house. Inside, Katie and Sloane question, Boris about the man in the pig mask. When Boris refuses to reveal the man's identity, Katie and Sloane use a makeshift spear to fatally injure him. Uncle Jason enters the house to find Boris dying and hears car engines outside. Katie and Sloane drive away, while Uncle Jason rushes Boris to the hospital. The sheriff informs Uncle Jason that Boris has passed away. Worried, Uncle Jason tries calling Katie's phone, but he's interrupted. The sheriff realizes he's exposed and aims his gun at Uncle Jason. Katie and Sloane arrive at a church where they discover that the pig mask guy is the town's priest. They confront him, and with teamwork, they defeat him. As Katie and Sloane drive off, they seem relieved. However, they make a stop and discover that the pig mask guy, who is the priest, has been chained behind their truck all along. They douse him in gasoline and set him on fire before leaving. While Katie and Sloane are doing well, Uncle Jason is now captured by the sheriff. Even worse, the sheriff has captured two new young women. Fortunately, Katie and Sloane come to the rescue. They tie up the sheriff and subject him to a dangerous game. It's clear that Katie and Sloane are a bit unstable, but their actions are driven by their circumstances. Those awful moments, the sheriff starts apologizing, but Katie ends it by hitting him in the head. Katie and Sloane then free the captured women and instruct them to help Uncle Jason. The women are grateful and won't tell Uncle Jason who killed the sheriff, showing their appreciation for being saved. Next, Katie and Sloane go to Jed and Lucas's mother's house. They drug her like she did to them before. They tie her up and take her to the basement where Jed is restrained. They use baseball bats to hurt him while his mother watches. Then they do the same with Lucas, except they force him to hurt his own mother. When he refuses, they shoot and kill him. They make it look like he took his own life, planning to blame him for the murders. The mother offers them money to spare her, but Katie uses a lawnmower to brutally kill her. In the following scene, Uncle Jason arrives at Katie's house to pick up her and Sloane. Some time has passed. Katie and Sloane are dropped off at the airport and happily head to New York City. The movie ends here. All right, folks, that wraps up the recap of Even Lambs Have Teeth from 2015. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for the next video.